Hello, this presentation is about writing essays on the subject of poetry. I'm going to address a problem which seems to have struck one or two of my Year 12 pupils recently. It's the problem of the meaning of a poem. I'd like to think in this presentation about the idea of poetry as being some sort of riddle or puzzle to solve. And to do that I'm going to take you to an example from a book called The Hobbit, which is the prequel to Lord of the Rings. In The Hobbit, Bilbo Baggins takes part in a riddle competition. He plays a game with Gollum and he wins the ring from him in that game. Here's one of the riddles. This thing all things devours, birds, beasts, trees, flowers, gnaws iron, bites steel, grinds hard stones to meal. Slays kings, ruins town, and beats high mountain down. Now you're probably hoping that you could just guess the answer, just like that. But it isn't that easy. We all love quick results. We want to get the ball in the back of the net. And you might be tempted to just guess straight to the answer. Well, I'm afraid that isn't a satisfactory method. It's not going to get you anywhere apart from basically getting eaten by Gollum in a dark cave under the ground. You need a method that is a little bit more systematic. I'm going to suggest that you re-examine the language in this short poem, picking out its features to see whether or not they guide you in the right sort of direction. I'm looking for a slightly more thorough reading of this short verse. Take the first line. This thing all things devours. Well, there are at least two features of the language that I would hope would stand out for you. The use of pronouns, an obvious strategy for someone writing a riddle. The word thing is confusing. And the word devours is quite a powerful word. It suggests some sort of a threat. Then you get a list of things which this creature, whatever the answer to the riddle is, a list of things that it eats. Now at first we find that it's acceptable but then seems more and more ludicrous. And as we go from the trees and the flowers to the iron and the steel, we realise it's unlikely to be human, and yet it's still suggested that it's quite aggressive. And we're inclined to think of it as being something quite dynamic, gnawing and biting. And yet the fact that it eats iron and steel seems insane. As we go to grinds hard stones to meal, you might notice a letter sound that stands out, the letter R. And that again reminds us of teeth and makes us think of an aggressive creature. As we come towards the end of this short verse, we see that this thing is powerful enough to slay a king and to ruin a whole town. And as we think of larger and more powerful things, the biggest symbol of power is put forward at the end of the verse. The idea that whatever it is, it is powerful enough to beat the mountain down. By that stage, we should be well on our way to a solution, really. We know that whatever it is, it's all-powerful. But what I'd like you to think about for a moment before you go to the answer, is I'd like you to think about how strange it is to find a poem which really is deliberately cryptic. I mean, well, how many poems do you think are really written in that way? Well, I'd hazard a guess it's probably less than 1%. No poet really wants to obscure his meaning from you completely. I mean, that would defeat the whole object. If a poet's got a brilliant idea, or has a momentous experience, the last thing he wants to do is to lock it away so that you can't get at it. He's not trying to shut you out from a particular emotional experience or a discovery he's made. He just wants to slow you down so that you can take a slightly more measured approach to understanding him. It reminds me a little bit of a theory that people used to have back in the 60s and 70s that one day we'd all be eating capsule food to save the mess and fuss of cooking our own meals. It was a stupid idea and it was never going to happen. Why? Because of course people enjoy taking their time over what they eat. They want to taste it. And Well writing about poetry is much the same. You need to detect all the nuances and savour all the interesting features as you read a poem. Just like the way you show the working out in a maths exam.
it's actually more valuable than the answer itself unless you happen to be under the ground in a cave with Gollum. When you're in the exam room you'll have to have a system of your own, a way of getting to the root meaning of a poem but a way that also enables you to say something interesting about the language. The meaning of the poem is worthless without an understanding of what interesting features are in that language. So style and meaning go hand in hand. Oh, and by the way, if you didn't figure out the answer to the riddle poem, well you could always read the Hobbit, but here is a clue. So in conclusion, I hope you've understood that the style of a poem, the poetic techniques used, are the main thing you should be writing about in your essay.